Welcome back to Fintech and Behavioral Finance. I am Andy Kim, your Dr. Finance. Did you know that the world's first internet-based investment bank actually started from South Korea, Do Hyun Dong, in 1999, more than 20 years ago? And that's related to my friend, so there's my story to tell you. Watch it. So did you know that an Ur Vogel of fintech or shijose of fintech was in korea actually right so let's get there but before we go there here's a big picture of fintech competition area first fintech area is about payment right and then the second fintech competition area is about digital banking as a whole right you can read korean bank uh, korean words over here try it digital banking all right 전쟁 영역 is like a competition area, all right? Now, um, sorry for the Korean words, by the way. Uh, selling fintech products, right? And that's like deposit, taking deposits, and then uh, trust, and insurance, and pension fund, and etc. That's the, uh, one of the areas. Trading and brokerage um, is another one. Stock brokerage and securities and derivatives trading kind of things. Yeah. And then the payment is, you know, that's there. And then treasury and asset management, that's uh, corporate cash management and personal asset management and private banking. Loan is like what? Simple loan, credit card and credit card loan and e lease and trade finance and all these kind of things, right? And then the last thing over here that you can imagine as a fintech is about primary market underwriting, right? Primary market underwriting. Um, IPO and bond issuance, right? Um, equity and bond. You issue those securities and then either float it in the open market or place it, right? Sell it to those capitalists or work the, 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 the rich people, right? Or funds, right? That's the area I'm talking about here, okay? The ur Vogel form of... In, uh, fintech in Korea started with this one. So let's go. Um, Andre Lee is the person I'm going to talk about, right? This is Hanguk Gyeongje, Korean Economy Daily, 1999. Um, yeah, you see this over here. Um, the newspaper article, right? It's a witness. They say Andre Lee, 36 year old at that time, is an ex star bond trader at Peregrine Investment Holdings, well, is coming back in Korea. Well, Peregrine, what is that? Well, that's one of the uh, best investment banks before East Asian financial crisis. Um, he used to be a big fish in the bond market in Hong Kong of Southeast Asia because he was buying and selling those Indonesian bonds or emerging market, uh, the emerging markets country bond, right? Um, it's risky. So it's like a junk bond in the U.S. market uh, sense, right? But just like Michael Milken, he was exploring into this junk bond kind of risky countries bonds and then traded it and made money out of it, okay? Because not many people was trying to buy and sell. He was the one. He was the prince over there. And then uh, he earned so much money, raked so much money for the bank, right? So that it accounted for 35% of the profit of fixed income division of Peregrine, okay? Mm, International Investment Bank. Established in Hong Kong and used to be called the Prince of Hong Kong Finance World. But in 1998, Indonesian rupee, okay, tough time, was devalued dramatically, which caused a tremendous loss to his bond portfolio and to Peregrine. That consequently went bankrupt. Oh my God. And if you remember, um, another one related to this Peregrine is what? Um, so many stars in Korean financial market, by the way, uh, were coming from this Peregrine. Um, one is Bill Huang. And we're going to talk about that guy later. And he was blamed, right? Right, Andre Lee was blamed for this loss and the Peregrine was bankrupt. But he started a venture company in finance at Seoul in June 1999, the next year. Nonyeondong, right? 
Um, the Gangnam, Gangnam style, baby. Right, Gangnam over here. And the name of the company was O1. Alphabet O and then Arabian number one. Okay, O1 incorporated. Young Hana. Young is like zero one. Hana. That's my name, Young Han. That's my name is digital, I said. Um, and then Deal Composer was the official name of it. Right? Why is it deal composer? The idea was composing deal and, uh, or uh, the, what kind of deal? Originating bond issuance deal, right? Composing those deals through internet. That was his idea. Cool. Um, and he did a showcase of his venture in Shilla Hotel. Deal composer is the name of it. It is an internet based investment bank underwriting corporate bonds. For the mid-cap companies in Asia, his, his vision is enabling companies to issue bonds via internet without meeting the investors face to face. What? What? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Um, he was pioneering this part, right? After COVID-19 crisis, it's something we can imagine about. But before this, it was tough or hard to imagine this kind of things, right? Wow, very creative approach, right? And it turns out he is a grandson of uh, the Yun Boson president of Korea, the second president of Korea. Uh, oh no, 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 not a grandson, but the uh, Yun Boson's uh, sister, younger sister's grandson. Uh, so he's well connected in Korean financial world, right? And then he has such a creative creativity and aggressivity, so that he was doing this in Nonyeondong, his office, and then Tusan uh, building or something like that. I uh, had the office over there. Everything including exchanging information and negotiating the bond covenant and all these kind of terms, right? Uh, the, when you borrow money, you have to, uh, you, you set up some kind of covenant that you have to uh, abide by. And then the negotiating those terms and then the loan spreads, right? Let's do it over internet. That's what they were trying it. And signing bond contracts would be done online. What? Yes, 20 years ago. You, I mean, the, the key, another key that, that I have to tell you is that you have to be just a half step ahead of the current uh, situation, right? Or the current, half step uh, ahead of the status quo. He was too far ahead of the status quo so that this business does not make money, right? But he eventually failed. But that was a very creative move. It would facilitate the financing of mid-sized companies in Asia, which would help the economic development of these countries. It is the first company in the world to build a cyber system to issue securities internationally. That's what Hanguk Gyeongjae, right, Korean Economy Daily said, right? Um, the thing is, uh, one of my Hong Kong friend, right, um, Tim Lung, was a computer scientist, programmer, right, same age as me, and then he worked as a programmer in this investment bank, O1, right, and that's why he came to my friend from Hong Kong came to Korea and stayed in my home for one month and then worked over there and then many more months uh, you know in on his own uh, he was living in Korea and working over there international world right very interesting personal story i heard about that right and then and then after this company was wrapping up right uh, finished it uh, because they could not make money and they wrapped up but my friend uh, moved on to Yahoo and then moved on to Microsoft as a programmer. So that tells a lot about this quality of these talents uh, attracted by this guy, Andre Lee, right? And then I also, you know, had a lot of fun with uh, meeting uh, some of them. Uh, some of them were the computer scientist, P MIT PhD, right? Who had uh, already some book publica publication, right? about codings and then those guys were serving for him working for him and then i also met some lawyers from thailand and taiwan as well right anyway afterwards my friend tim lung uh, uh joined tencent and then worked there as a fintech director for asia right 
Now you see the flow of talents, right? Originating from those South Korean uh, Urfogel of fintech. One of the key messages that I want to tell you is like while you are in undergraduate program, make sure you make friends with, you know, a lot of international friends while they are here, right? Um, and then he gave a guest lecture last year to my GBA students, right? Global Business Administration students and talking about, you know, the fintech, state of the art fintech. I'm going to tell you some more about those fintech technologies that I also talk uh, use in my research. So wait for that one. Thanks for watching it. Thank you.